morning, nine o'clock. We haven't met for a long time. And you've been praying for me, and I appreciate your prayers. This morning, God is bringing a blessing to you. But I'm going to sing in uh, Igbo language. And I'm singing the original one. Chinikakiwe, Onye Dikagi, Agba Ogunpa, Onye Dikagi. Everybody, Chinikakiwe, Onye Dikagi, Agba Ogunpa, Onye Dikagi. I used to say Onye Jika. Onye, is it Gi? Onye Gika Gi. Samana corrected me. She's coming here this morning. She's 50 years old. Now, my, the topic of my message is why so stressed? You are here this morning. And your mind has been traveling faster than the speed of light. You know, the human conscience is like a compass. And a compass needle always points to the north. If you turn to the right, it's pointing to the north. So wherever the north is, that is where the needle points to. So also is your conscience. When things go wrong, you realize there is no peace in the body. Praise the Lord. First Samuel chapter 17 and verse 16. We're going to look at a nation that was so stressed. But someone comes in with a new language nobody has heard before. You have a language in you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, please. I'm waiting for you and thank you. Uh, Joe, we can do the morning one now. The Chinikaki Wee version. And it reads, aren't you glad when you see that young Sunday school boy, Nigel, playing the drum kit? Thank you, Nigel, we're so proud of you. He loves it, is he smiling? Okay. Now, it reads, for 40 days, the Philistines came forward 
every morning and evening and took his stand. For 40 days, verse 16 only, this Philistine, and the Philistine they are talking about is Goliath, who was nine feet tall. When I'm speaking with Friday, my neck always goes up. You can talk with, with him for a long time. Because your neck will be aching. He's so tall. But this is nine feet. And he's a giant. And he has brothers. The family, I don't know how they grow so fat on their flat. They are so tall. And the Philistine army is facing the Israelites. And Goliath comes with a new terms. He said, we are not going to fight each other, but choose a man from amongst you to come and face me. And whoever wins, the losers will be their servants. For how long? We don't know. King Saul, the commander-in-chief of the army, was in his tent. And according to the scripture, he was the tallest man in Israel. Very handsome, but he won't come out. So who is going to come out? And Goliath takes advantage of this. Every morning, at dawn, he comes up and be laughing at them. You sissies. Sissy means somebody who is a kind of a chicken. Cannot stand on his own two feet. So you wake in the morning with Goliath. And at sundown, he comes back again. I can't help you, but let me say a little bit about the army. When we are in our trenches, at around sunset, there is something we call stand to. The whistle will go, and you whatever you do, you go back to your trench and be, watch, be watching your front. Has this thing been acting like this, or is it because I'm here? It's not the mic. So you'll be watching your front. You see, between the last light and the darkness, we want your eyes to get used to what? You see. So you're looking at this and then darkness falls. <laughs> Goliath is not here. But we can imagine this was a kind of thing. So when you are there, you stay there, you remain in the darkness. And now dawn comes up and the whistle blast goes again. Because the enemy will either attack at dusk, just when the light is faded, or at dawn when the light just comes up. And that is exactly what, what, what was happening. So Goliath comes in first thing in the morning, last thing in the evening. He will come and taunt the Israelites. 
So it was a kind of shivering of feet. It drops cold chill on the ordinary soldier and it spreads all around. I'm asking again, why are you so stressed? Now the Lord showed me that there's someone you, 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 you had a kind of heat sensation, heavy, hot sensation from your feet. It was climbing you up. And all of a sudden, you don't know. Who is that? If you are here, this is causing you to have all kinds of fears. Today, Jesus is taking away the fears from you. But why all this was happening? Maybe the 41st day, a young lad, just 17 years old, And the Jewish people never shave. So when you see a lad, they don't, have, they don't grow beard. You grow beard by age. A young lad who was sent by his father to send some stuff to his brothers, three senior brothers who had been drafted into the army, and this is uh, David, his senior brother Eliab, Abinadab, and Shama were in Saul's army. And daddy sends David, hey, take this ration to your brothers. Find out how the battle is going and come back. And when he comes, who shows up? Goliath. Hey, bunch of sissies. And because he's so tall and speaking over the plains, you could hear his voice. And David will ask, who is that guy? He hasn't finished and Goliath comes up again with a loud voice. Now, David realizes that it's the Philistines who are fighting. And these are folks who don't have any covenant with God. But people were so scared that they've forgotten that they have covenant with God. Otherwise, a kind of defense pact. There was a time when Ghana had issues with, with their neighbors. I was then working in the army headquarters as a G, G2 staff intelligence. I was there. And we felt like attacking this country. So I had to do a research and do a, a write-up to the commander. I said, the folks you're talking about, they look little. But they are defense packed with this country, defense packed with country B. And here we are. We've even declared that we are not paying debts. We are out of friendship with everybody around us. We may win the first 48 hours. But where is your supply, resupply going to come from? Where is your ammunition going to come from? What about your I mean, uh, army boots and other things you need in the field? Folks, sir, we better jaw jaw rather than war war. I don't know. The whole thing was sorted out diplomatically. Praise the Lord. We felt we were so strong we, we could run over this army, but it's not that easy. 
Then, David shows up and he goes like, who, who are these Philistines? Who are they to be so nasty and insult our God? Hey, the God of the heavens, the God who created the earth, we have an alliance with him. Praise the Lord. 24-hour covenant, 24-7, is always there. We can call on this God at any given time. And the way he was talking, despite the fears, Goliath was brewing over the people, this man has a different language because he has a knowledge of his God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And a knowledge that is so much alive in him and is with him every time, anywhere he goes to. And the way he was talking Soon, it's like a rumor. They said there's a young guy, a little boy, talking like he owns the Israeli army. He's talking like he's a solution to the pollution. He's talking like, hey, there's someone talking faith here. There's someone who is speaking the language we want to hear. No wonder the king heard about this. This is a good rumor. Huh? When you spread the news that Jesus loves you and tell everybody about the good news. That and King Saul asked for this boy to be brought over. And David comes to him. Now who are you? Oh, I'm, I'm the last son of Jesse of Bethlehem. And why have you come here? This was a kind of interview I would imagine when went on with King Saul. Oh, daddy said I should bring this cheese to you and the other Russian to my brothers. So I've dumped them with the quartermaster. Uh huh. Why is it we're talking? Goliath shows up again. And David, I believe, in front of King Saul says, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? You know, the difference is a circumcision. My tribe, we do male circumcision. I went through that. I was five, six. Uh, Eight days old, so I, I don't know what happened to me. And that's the sign of the covenant they have with God. And it was initially cut with um, Abraham. And he had to circumcise his son. So every male child, as soon as you are eight days old, they will cut the hanging flesh of your male organ. And is there up to today? Look at Israel today. They are tiny, like a string. But you can't touch them because they have covenant with what? The living God. Praise the Lord. But another covenant was established which is reflected in Jeremiah 31, 31. And the prophet called it a new covenant from God. Not with nations, but individuals like you. And when you believe in Jesus, you come into covenant. You are ushered into covenant. And this knowledge must propel you out of all fear, out of all scare around you. 
And the king had to encourage him, hey, David, you know, that man has been fighting since he was a youth. And he says, sir, when I'm with a sheep in the field and a lion comes and picks up a lamb in between his jaws, I run after it. Look, he's a shepherd looking after sheep. And look at, uh, can you imagine a lion with breakfast in his mouth? He says, I will open the jaws and retrieve my lamb. And if he goes home, I'll break his neck. And it's not only lions that are predators around. Bears. They come. They come and pick a, la a lamb. And they are running away. This young lad will chase after it. Catch up with it. Retrieve the lamb. And if he goes on. Oh, I break the neck. <coughs> and it goes. The God that saved me from the paw of the lion. And the God, the very God, that saved me again from the paw of the bear is able. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's talking a language that is so real, that is so true. Amen. Amen. Hey, God loves you to bits. Amen. No matter what you do, and he cannot stop loving you. And Psalm 89 verse 2 says, He's loved you with an everlasting love. Now, for the king to ask this young man to represent the whole nation of Israel must be mad. He's only 17 years old, he hasn't been to any battle. And you are saying, okay, young man, you can represent us. You see, the presence was with David. Because on the day he was ordained before his brothers in Bethlehem, the Bible says the spirit of the Lord came upon him that day. And I know the spirit of the Lord is on you. Whether you're going out, whether you're coming in, whether you're shopping, whether you are at work, whether you have a new job, you're giving up the old job, you're taking up a new one, that God, his presence is with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He said that God is, is going to look after me. And the way he was talking... You cannot help it but to believe it. He was talking from experience. This is someone who has been worshiping all oh, year, man. But he keeps worshiping. That's part the ba, ba, ba. You'll be worshiping with God. And when you worship God, you surely hear his voice. The other day I said, A thought can just come to you, and when you hold on to it, adventure begins with God. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so the king suggests, David was just there with his uh, catapult and uh, a little bag. And he says, can you 
try. Take, take on my armor. He wants to help. Look, when God is on your side, nobody can help you more than God. Amen. Because he tried the king's armor on. And he says, I can't move. I'm not comfortable in this, sir. So he took that armor down. Don't depend on your intelligence. Don't depend on your own know-how. So he says, now you can go and fight the army. You are representing the whole Israel. If you haven't heard David's voice, you'll be scared. But if you've heard his language, you say, yeah, the God of heaven is on our side. He's going to fight for us. And you'll be watching with confidence. And David walks forward. Now when he was going, the king asked the army commander, but whose son is that? You don't even know his father. You don't even know where he's coming from. And you say, go and represent us. Remember, when he dies, we are all dead. <laughs> it's just like playing the lottery with your life. In Ghana, they play, they play the lottery. A lot of them, from morning, they're making calculations and 90 numbers. And you, you, you need to expect, is it how many? Is it seven or five? Brother, help me here. Five numbers. And they call them lo uh, Loto Doctors. They do all their calculations uh, and everything. They are bopping. You know, the, 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 the one with the, uh, the cheap one. That is what they use. They say, oh, two years ago, uh, week uh, 51, he, he played these numbers. Four years ago, week 17, he played these numbers. So when you calculate this and this and this and this, you, you, they will work this out for you on a blackboard. Accra. They will work all this out for you. And they will convince you. And you find people staking, staking all their money on so that is because of what they've heard and what they've believed. But I'm talking of a God. Amen. You cannot try. He's always there. Amen. He never finishes. And if he says he loves you, it means you are loved. And you've got to believe that you are loved. For it to be effective. But whose son is that? And the army commander too says, I don't know. And the king says, well, find out. Meanwhile, David was on his own. But he's in alliance with the whole of heaven. Amen. The whole of heaven was behind him. And here was Goliath coming. He had uh, his armor bearer in front of him. He sees this little boy coming with that armor. And he became angry. And he started cursing David with the God of Dagon and all the other gods. He felt so insulted. I wanted to fight a man, not a boy. The enemy thinks he's got a boy. But a boy with the whole alliance of heaven. You are not just ordinary. You have the whole of heaven behind you. You are in a covenant, a living covenant that is today, will be there tomorrow, and forever. Someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Hmm. 
And apparently, Goliath was on a hill. He saw this young boy coming, and in a fury, he also started coming down. When he was coming down, David was what? Going up. Picks up his catapult. Feeds in with a stone. Smooth stone. But he didn't realize that with him is only shock ashen. You know, that's something. Shock ashen, you hate the person. But David was in the missile business. Things that fly. Woo, 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 woo. So when you're holding a rifle, you are not in a shock action. When you squeeze a trigger, something comes out. And when the ammunition is finished, that is where you, they, they shout, fix bound it. Mm. And now you go into shock action. Me and you. Fili, fili, gadochi. In, out, on guard. You are not in that business. You are not in shock action. You have missiles to fire. And you are not going to be involved in the firing. You only have to speak. Hey, trust what the Bible says. Amen. That Jesus is the son of God. For God so loved the world, help me, that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. I believe it. I don't know about you. And that is where my power lay. Mama Comfort, I said that is where my power lays. You see, when you believe it, that authority that Jesus wrestled out of the devil becomes yours. Amen. 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 Now, when we talk about the blood of Jesus, we are announcing the victory of Christ Amen. and the defeat of Satan. Amen. The defeat of Satan. It's done, yes, it's done. It's done, yes, it's done. For the power of Satan is overcome. It's done, yes, it's done. It's done, yes, it's done. For the power of Satan is overcome. Hallelujah, I am free. Thank you, Jesus, for you did it all for me. Hallelujah, I am free. Thank you, Jesus, for you did it all for me. I came across minister in 1983 in Bracknell, here. We were hanging about. We don't even know where we we're going to live. And he was coming to preach. And I had shingles all over me. I couldn't even stretch my hands. And he stood there. We were in this church, Pentecostal Assembly, assembly in Bracknell. Sister Adelaide, he started singing. And I said, even this tune is no nice. It's done, yes, it's done. It's done, yes, it's done. For the power of Satan is overcome. It's done, yes, it's done. It's done, yes, it's done. For the power of Satan is overcome. Hallelujah. I am free. Thank you, Jesus, for you did it all for me. 
Hallelujah, I am free. Thank you, Jesus, for you did it all for me. It's done. Wrapped up. No wonder with a shout, he screamed, it is finished. Amen. It is done. Amen. Not I am finished, but it is finished. Amen. The battle for your life is won. It's won already. Amen. There's no need to be scary. There's no need to be fearful. There's no need to be afraid. Things may be happening all around you. But you have an alliance. Amen. Alliance Amen. with God. Amen. Alliance nobody can cut off. Because he who made the alliance with you is always faithful. Amen. He will not eat his words up. Oh, I didn't say that. I didn't think this would happen. That was why I said this. It is done. Amen. Amen. It's done. Amen. Well, somebody you have pain in your ear is going into your throat, your right side. Anyone like that? Anybody like that? Check your throat. Swallow, swallow, swallow. Praise the Lord. If it's not here, wherever it is, receive your healing. Amen. You are watching me from whichever country, I don't know. But if it's you, check because God has just touched you. Amen. 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 We have a language, a new language, a language that is not coming out of fear, but the language that is born out of faith in God Amen. who delivers you know that God delivered Daniel from the lion's den? Hungry lions. They threw him there and they saw him as poison. Amen. You don't touch, you don't smell. It's not, is it Chibok or poison or what? No, it's not Salisbury. But the lions were there, a year was meat. So Goliath, swore at the young <clears throat> lad, look, I will tear your body apart and throw it to the birds of the air. He says, shut up, you liar. I'm going to kill you, cut off your head. And the beasts of the field will chop Philistine meat. There will be free meat for everybody. Philistine meat. So he was coming and David says, hey, you coming at me with the sword and the spear, the javelin, but I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. That's where I'm coming from. So wherever you are, you are not alone. Hello? You don't have to be Liverpool just to know a football club, just to know you are not alone. <laughs> it is where, <well>, brother. <laughs> hey, you have company. I remember telling a policeman, he, he told me, he, he was another Goliath here in London. A very tall policeman. I don't know how I even said that. I gave him a leaflet. And on the leaflet, on the flyer, it says, uh, do you know Jesus? It was a Saturday afternoon, hot summer's day. He picked that thing from me. He looked at it. He read it. And he says, I don't believe in this. Tall man, I said, the devil doesn't believe either. You have company. 
And do you know what happened? The man couldn't move his feet. He got stuck. I was walking away. Look behind, he was still standing. I went further, look behind, he was still standing. You have company, but you have the company of God Amen. and the company of angels. Amen. Amen. The angels of the law encamp around those who fear him. If you believed in him, you have a good company. Amen. Hallelujah. They may be chasing you out of your place of work, but that company doesn't leave you behind. Wherever you go, he goes with you because you believe this in your heart. It's not a talisman you keep in your pocket that when you forget a talisman, oh, I've lost it. But it's in your heart wherever you go. Amen. So we're going to learn this song. He's done, yes, he's done. He's done, yes, he's done. For the power of Satan is over. He's done, yes, he's done. done yes, he's done. done, yes, he's done. For the power of Satan is overcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am free. Thank you, Jesus. For you did it all for me. Hallelujah, I'm free. Hallelujah. I am free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For you did it all for me. And, and Jesus made it so simple. That if you believe that God has sent him. If you believe with your heart and you confess with your mouth, you are saved. You join this army of believers. Amen. Is there anyone here who would like to join this army of believers? You want to make Jesus your own? Well, if you have a need, would you please walk forward? If you want to be prayed for something. Last Wednesday, we prayed with a guy who was so stressed up because he was going, and the doctors were going to check whether the swelling is had is cancer or not. You know, when you're waiting for results, you can't help it. It's so scary. I remember holding the, the part. I said, go. It's not, I didn't even know he was going in for, for a test. He, he said, I'm going to the hospital tomorrow. Now I heard he's cancer free. <laughs> this God we are talking about He's a serious God. And he cares so much about you. Thank you. Anybody wanting to come forward quickly? Okay. 